All right, y'all, I did not feel up to making a whole long video tonight, so we're gonna keep this quick. I turned 36 a few weeks ago, so now I'm 36 years old, 38 weeks and four days pregnant with an IVF pregnancy, and I'm feeling kind of over it. And I think it's just a good reminder that no matter how badly you wanted to be pregnant, no matter how many miscarriages you've had or pregnancy losses, usually you're kind of over it at the end, and that's okay. I always tell my patients at the end of pregnancy, like mentally, you kind of have to get to that point where you're like, "Ugh, I'm so done. I'll do anything to get this baby out because you you are going to have to do anything to get this baby out. No matter how you do it, it's, it's hard. Birth is hard. It doesn't matter if you go to the hospital and get an epidural. It doesn't matter if you give birth at home. It doesn't matter if you have a planned C-section. Every single way is hard and has different challenges. And my midwife loves to say, the only way out is through. You just got to do it. So mentally, I'm at that point. Physically, I feel fine. I think just because we've had three losses and because, well, three losses since our last baby um, and because we had to do IVF this time mentally, it's just been a lot more challenging. Like I feel a lot more anxiety at the end. I feel like my brain is still, you know, when I try to think about the birth, there's still this like mental wall of like, well, this might not end with a baby. Don't get your hopes up. And I'm ready to not feel that way anymore. And I'm ready to just hold my baby. So I'm doing all of the evidence-based things I can do to encourage that along. Um, I did get a membrane sweep last week, a few days ago. I was only one centimeter and 50% effaced. So it didn't you know, put me into labor. I did have a lot of Braxton Hicks afterwards. Um, but I think a lot of moms get hung up on the dilation and not the effacement when they get their cervix checked. And so one centimeter, just about the size of my finger, um, the 50% effacement part means that, you know, throughout most of pregnancy, your cervix is about four centimeters long and it gets thinner and thinner the closer you get to labor and then throughout labor. And so if I'm 50% effaced or 50% thinned out, that means that my cervix was only about two centimeters long. I find personally when I sweep someone's membranes, it's more likely to be effective if they're at least 50 to 70% effaced. Usually I would say closer to 70 and usually at least three centimeters. So I wasn't expecting full-blown labor yet, but I'm hoping it helps ripen my cervix a little bit more to get it ready for the next membrane sweep. <sighs> I am going to keep doing acupuncture in the meantime. I'm also eating dates. There was one small study, I believe it was based out of Jordan several years ago. I don't know if it's been recreated since where they found that women who ate six dates a day at the end of pregnancy were less likely to go past their due date, less likely to need an induction. As much as I don't like dates, I've been chopping them up and putting them in my oatmeal every morning. You can do evening primrose oil. I think the evidence is a little bit more wishy-washy on that. I did use evening primrose oil. It's just an over-the-counter supplement that you can insert vaginally um, to help ripen your cervix at the end of pregnancy. And I find it's really more important for first-time moms since I'm already one centimeter and 50% thinned out. I'm not doing the evening primrose oil now. And then I'm also drinking raspberry leaf tea, which I don't expect to put me into labor. It's just encouraging my uterus to do those practice contractions or Braxton Hicks contractions to stay toned and ready for labor. I get a lot of questions from patients about like, oh, should I be bouncing on a birth ball? Is that going to put me into labor? And it's probably not, but it is good for like doing hip circles on and making sure baby's head is like really getting engaged in your pelvis and putting a lot of pressure on your cervix. So if you do have those Braxton Hicks contractions, hopefully they're more effective and they help ripen your cervix more. As of tonight, it's Sunday, August 18th. Tomorrow night, there's a super moon or like a mega full moon. We're also having some really stormy weather in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm hoping that combination of things helps encourage me to go into labor. You can ask any labor and delivery nurse, midwife, OBGYN, emergency room worker. Um, it always seems like a lot of women's waters will break or they'll go into labor um, during a full moon. There definitely seems to be some truth to that. So I'm hopeful. I will keep you guys posted. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.